Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm doing a video that I have not done in quite some time. I'm doing a palette resurrection with an older palette that I feel like a lot of people have forgotten about by now. This is the Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette. I remember being so excited when this first came out and how like I bought it like the day it went live on Sephora so I could actually get my hands on it. And at first glance, it's like a really pretty, just really red palette. You've got some gorgeous shades in here. Unfortunately, I feel like it's not versatile. You kind of get, I don't want to say the same look, but you do get very similar looks out of that. And I'm going to go more into detail about that after we actually do the looks. So I was going to do originally three looks with this palette, but I thought two looks would suffice just because of the range of colors you're actually getting in here. Let's go ahead and jump into some swatches real quick. So here are the swatches from the lightest side of the palette all the way to the darkest. This is one swatch with my finger with no primer and dry. So like the rest of the Urban Decay palettes of this kind of size, you're getting 12 eyeshadows. You get seven mattes and the rest are, I would call them more like satins. They're not really shimmers. And my beef with this palette is that the shimmers or satins are not different enough from the mattes. So when I go in with a color all over the lid, it kind of just blends into the look. It's not really the centerpiece or the part of the look that really pops. And I feel like if they had done something different with the shimmers in this palette, you would have something a lot more versatile. Like I really wish this first kind of light shade right here was like a blinding white shade. It's pretty much like it's not a matte, but it's got just a tiny bit of shimmer in it, but not to the point where you could really notice it. Um, I was really disappointed in these two shades right down here in the middle. They are called Dirty Talk and Scorch. They look very similar when you swatch them out. And I'm wearing Dirty Talk on my lid today. It's not, they're not really that bright. They're deep. They're very smoky, deep satins. I keep wanting to say shimmers, but they're not really shimmers. That's, and that's my issue. I really wish we had gotten some bright, bold reds, maybe even a purple, but something to differentiate these satin slash shimmer wannabes from the rest of the palette. Because I feel like the number one complaint I heard about this palette is that you're really only getting one look out of here. That's not really true, but the looks you get out of here are going to look very similar. So let's go ahead and jump into the looks. Don't you know 
Don't you know it's all for you? Don't you know it's all for you? Every breath I take for you. Don't you know I like it too? So those are both of the looks. Looking back on them, they do look fairly similar. This is look number two. It is a little bit more smoky, a little bit deeper than the other one, but I really need to pull this palette out and use it more as a companion palette because these are some gorgeous shades. I'm not going to knock that. They, mm, excuse me, they are beautiful. They blend out perfectly. I love them and I need to stop looking at this as an all-in-one palette because it's really not. It is a companion palette. You've got some great mattes in here. I'm not a huge fan of using the shimmers wannabes all over the lid, but they do blend out nicely if you actually want to use them in your crease or in your outer V or even on your lower lash line. So what I need to look at this palette as is a companion piece and really bring in some stunning shimmers, some stunning glitters. This would be an excellent palette to bring in some of the Stila glitter and glows to work with. This would be an excellent palette to use like your highlighter all over your lid as a shimmer shade with this palette. I just need to get over that initial bump of not reaching for it because it's not an all-in-one palette and really just start getting a little bit more creative with it. I'm going to say I don't regret purchasing this palette. I still got a lot of enjoyment out of it, but unfortunately it has been pushed kind of back to the back of my collection and I'm going to work to keep bringing this out for these stunning matte shades and just get more creative with the way that I'm using it. Because I feel like I'm looking at it and putting it in this box of what I expect out of an eyeshadow palette and because of that I'm like, oh well I can't do this with it, I can't do that with it. But there's so much more I could do with it. I could bring in some liquid lipsticks as liners and do some more designs with it. I could use my glitters, I could use, I could even use it with other palettes. I also have, um, single shadows I don't use a whole lot so there's, there's really a world of possibility with this palette that I've just kind of immediately discounted and I need to not do that with my palettes so thank you guys so much for watching I hope if you guys like this video you'll give it a thumbs up and let me know if you also have this palette and how else you also like to use it also I need to get rid of the brush I never use the brushes in the Urban Decay palettes I don't know why I still have it thank you guys for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video bye Thank you.